Are you a budget-minded gamer? I like money. Are you a person looking to upgrade your stream today without spending a bunch of money? And audio is what you're focusing on. Well, today might be the perfect video for you because Five Fine sent over the AM8 microphone. I believe this has the same capsule as the K688, which I replaced my Shure SM7B on my stream with that microphone. So, can this $50 mic replace a $400 mic? Let's find out after a word from our sponsors. This video is brought to you by Lightstream. Lightstream is a cloud-based streaming service where you can stream directly from your console to Lightstream and then they will re-encode your stream with professional overlays. Things like stream elements, rainmaker.gg, a whole bunch of things like videos and graphics you can put onto your stream and never have to use a streaming PC to do these things. Right now you can get 25% off your first three months by using my coupon code DarkendCyrus. So make sure you go ahead and visit the link in the description to go ahead and order this. And thank you to Lightstream for sponsoring this video. The AM8, if you don't know about what I do, I've covered a bunch of budget microphones, especially targeting them towards replacing or getting a sound similar to the SM7B and things like the K688, which I absolutely love from Fifine, the Fiducci SL40, and yes, the Fiducci. Are you trying to romance me? And then the Mayono mic, which is the most recent review on my channel. It's about $150, not necessarily budget, but it comes with an app and is absolutely astonishing. So, so with that being said, just know that we have looked at several microphones. I feel like I have a space to be able to tell you whether or not this mic is gonna live up to to the height but let's unbox it let's plug it in let's do some sound samples we'll do a, a couple of these mics that are around the same price range we'll put all of that on the screen so you can see it and then compare the sound of the am8 from five fine which i haven't listened to yet this is raw to all of those maybe throw in the sm7b just so you have it so let's get into the unboxing So here's the microphone right here for you to understand kind of the way it looks. Um, looking at the back side, pass it to touch mute. And then on the other side, buttons. And then for size comparison, here is the Shure SM7B. And then there is that microphone. So you can kind of see how big that mic is. It's nowhere near as long. That's what she said. <laughs> maybe like four fifths, three quarters the length of Assurance SM7B. But most people know this mic, that's why I always compare to it. And then looking at the capsule, let's go ahead and pull that off. It's all the way at the top. That's absolutely crazy. Let me see if I can actually get it. Can you see that actually focus? That capsule is all the way at the very top. That means that if you put your mouth right on the end of this, you're probably gonna get some popping and weird stuff, so. That's what she said. We'll see how it goes. So why don't we plug it in? Let's start off with XLR and then we'll switch to USB and then that we'll be able to see the RGB at that time. But let's start off with XLR. Let's do some sound comparisons of the Fifine AM8 to a few mics on XLR. I forgot something really important. What else came in the box? There is a USB-A to USB-C cable. Fairly good length, honestly. Nothing special here. There's not like a USB-C to A adapter in here, so you get what you get. Now let's do some sound comparisons. This is the Fifine AM8, and I'm about three inches away from the end of the capsule, which is the end of the microphone in this case. And this microphone installed really easily onto the stand. You don't get RGB with the XLR setup unless you have it plugged into USB, but for now we're just going to run it like this. And just a side note, if you're just curious, Phantom Power will not turn on the RGBs. Yes, I tested it. I'm sure somebody's going to ask it in the comments. Let's go into another budget microphone around this price range and let you hear what it sounds like on XLR. This is the Fifine K688, and I'm speaking about the same distance, about three inches from the end of the microphone, and because this capsule is also at the very edge of the grill, basically three inches away from the diaphragm. And the K688 should be the direct comparison to the AM8, because I believe it has the exact same capsule, just a different look, with very similar features, just no RGB, but looks a lot more like the SM7B. Let's go on to another microphone for this next comparison. This next microphone is the Fiducci SL. 40 coming in around $70. I think it comes in at 100 on Amazon most of the time on sale. This microphone has very similar features, 
USB-C, XLR, microphone volume, headphone volume, etc. on the microphone, but just a different perspective. This reminds me a little bit more of the MV7 in look, uh, kind of like the Mayono in the software. This one has the look of that MV7. And once again, this is the Fiducci SL40 for XLR sound test. And just for good measure, this is the Shure SM7B, the $400 microphone that a lot of people strive to have, but these microphones perform just as good most of the time. We're going to see what the AM8 sounds like in a moment. I haven't listened to it. You have. Tell me, jump down in the comments. What were your thoughts thinking of the AM8 compared to these microphones? Does it sound good? Close to the K688? Do you think it could compare, replace, etc.? What are your thoughts? $400 microphone? $50 to $100 microphone? With more features, by the way. This is the Fifine AM8. Now we are at 100% gain, and I'm talking into the microphone about the same distance as for you to be able to hear. And what you will notice is now we have RGB on the microphone. Right now it's actually rolling through a rainbow effect, but you can actually touch right here on the back side of the microphone, there's an RGB button and you can cycle in between them. There's like red, orange, yellow, greens, blues, violets, indigos. There's a white and then that RGB kind of rolling piece. I feel like it's tasteful. Let me turn to the side. I feel like that's really tasteful. I don't think it's over the top. Um, it's not too much. And then you do get, as you can see on the top, there's a green light right here. If you touch it, obviously it's gonna mute by the way. I'll have my editor switch over to the actual headset mic that I'm wearing, the lavalier, which as you can see, it does mute. Now we're gonna switch back. And now we're live. You can see that we're actually unmuted now, but you, you can actually change that color pretty easily. It's again, all capacitive touch. And I'm really liking the RGB flow. You don't get much control of it. You just get the presets that you have here. It is really easy to kind of miss it. And one thing that I don't like if I find is that as I touch this, I bet you there's a bunch of handling noise. I haven't listened to the sound samples yet. Let me know if there's sound like handling of the microphone as I touch all of this. Anyway, everything looks like it's performing well. I do feel like the microphone needs some extra gain and maybe I can give that in Windows, but right now it actually looks pretty awesome. So let me know what your thoughts are for this. Just for comparison, we'll throw the Fiducci for uh, USB on as well as the K688 so you can have a comparison. So here's the Fiducci SL40 on USB, no flashing lights or anything, but you still get a gain knob, a mute button that's not capacitive. You actually click it and you do get some handling noise with that and then a volume up or down button either for the headset or for the actual microphone. So again, this is the Fiducci SL40 on USB-C for you to have a comparison to not only the XLR, but to the USB-C of the AM8. And this is the Fifine K688, once again on USB-C. This one has a mute button. It also has the volume and gain knobs of the headset, as well as the microphone on the bottom that the AM8 has, as well as most of these microphones that have similar features. So this again is the K688. This should sound almost identical to the AM8. I don't know. I'm about to hear and then give you my thoughts and opinions, etc. Also, I just realized while I have this mic out, my like light over here keeps turning on and off. So sorry for the content continuity problem. Uh, yeah, it'll be what it is. No purple light coming over here on the side. Let's get back. I'm going to go ahead and tell you and listen to all of this stuff and let you know what my thoughts are of the Fifine AM8 and how well it stacks up to the competitors. So Spartacus Titus, this guy, um, is actually my brother, but he was a part of the original K688. So I told him to come in here at the video where we actually talked about this. I want him to do it because he had an opinion about this and I want to see what he thinks of the AM8 and what his thoughts are. So what, what did you think of the K688 originally? So when it came to the K688, um, I was very blown away at the fact that you could have a phone or have a microphone that was half the price, fraction of the price. You had paid for that Shure SM7B. I'd heard nothing all about it. I know you had told me all about the Shure SM7B was, oh, it was the king of the crop. It was, <laughs> it was the King Arthur of all microphones. And, and I've never been a microphone guy. Okay. Um, but listening to it, I mean, that really blew me away at the quality that you got for the price. I mean, it, for somebody that's just trying to get into streaming, but doesn't want to spend four hundred dollars yeah, yeah. yeah yeah i mean four hundred dollars i mean they can get you a graphics card in this economy right now <laughs> yeah. I, I mean but you can get this one right here for 70 bucks and it's still going to give you the same exact quality well with that being said 
I ranked it actually above the SM7B in my original mic comparison, but I actually haven't listened to the AM8. I have the headset and I want you to hear the sound and then after you hear both, then I want you to react to it and kind of hear what it sounds like, okay? So I'm gonna scrub through some sounds. We're gonna leave all this in there just in case you get some reactions, but I want you to listen to it. Spoiler alert, if it sounds good, I'm probably taking it with me back in my room. <laughs> right, so here we go. Hopefully I don't break something trying to play these. Is it the same? They're very similar. Although with this one, I don't know if it's been EQ'd like the, the K688 has. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this one tends to have a background similar to almost talking into a theater hall. Kind of. There's, there's a, a reverb in there. Is, there's not so much as a reverb as much as a phantom space that sounds like it's what? just out. It's very wide. It's like there's still just a little bit white noise or ambient noise yeah. that kind of leaks in. But the K688 feels more compressed if and it doesn't move past that. Let's... And you may hear that. Okay. So with this one, it has... A little more bass to it you catch a lot more of the the bass tone of your voice this one i could actually hear the mic stand being pulled really? you could kind of hear it it oh, was handle. reverbing through the metal oh, wow. into into it and you could kind of hear the oh, wow. and so you'll kind of hear it okay. this one it kind of had that this did not so the short SM7B, your high ends sound very, they sound like you're talking into a, a tin can almost at the top end. The K688, very dialed in. I'm not getting that that vibe that you get from the top end of your short SM7B. And with this one, it is very small, but it is slightly there. Overall, I would still go with the K688 followed by the A. X8, AM8. AM8. You most certainly have beat out the $400 crowned king of microphones. <laughs> I would rather spend my money for the AM8 or the K688. I'm actually using the Ampler Rocket right now. I've I love these microphones. I think we still have like USB to listen to, but you have no audio experience. I mean, nothing at all. You, like you played instrument in school, but that's all you really have. I, and I I did some mild tuning on car audio but i mean it was nothing that yeah, that's not a microphone it was all right let's listen to usb really quick all right usb all right so outside of hearing the dragging there was some mild dragging with this while you were trying to show the the rgb but audio wise this was very close to this one i can you can tell that this one's kind of been you know kind of messed with uh, but straight out of the box, like you can tell this right here could easily reach that. Um, this picks up a lot more. This seems to have a little bit more range to it. But there again, this one did too when we first unboxed it. It had a lot to go on. This one is kind of middle of the road. The, for USB, it was the SL40. Or yes, the SL40, yeah, yeah, yeah. which was also another thing I used on the 24 hour stream. Um, I personally like that mic. I just felt like I had to be right next to it. Like I was having a battle buddy while I was talking. Uh, and that was one thing I noticed when I was doing the recording. This was maxed out 100% on Windows, 100% in the recording on the microphone too. And I was on it mm. and it still was quiet. The K688, it's still a beautiful microphone. <laughs> I 100% as a man that doesn't know anything about audio, just your regular consumer buyer, go with either the K688 or the AM. I would 100% guarantee you, you will not be let down with that. Right, let, let me listen to it real quick. Let me see what happens. I definitely want him to add in there when I do the chef's kiss. I want him to do the wow. 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 <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. my only request. Okay, okay, okay. All right. <laughs> what i'll say number one you're right something weird okay so the am8 so the am8 on xlr has this like it's not reverb it just feels like there's an echo like a, a presence in the background like it's almost bouncing around in the back of the capsule kind of like what the sm7b is designed to do where you've got that long snout in the back to kind of allow that sound to bounce around and and, and do its thing but it feels like they tried to do it here because it's plastic it just added a kind of a toy sound. I'm not saying that it sounds like a toy, but if you listen really close, put some earbuds in and listen, it has it has like a a wide presence in the back. Not that it's bad, it's just it's different. It's not it's definitely it's a choice. And I think for certain streamers this could be a really good option, but compared to the K688, it sounds almost identical. I do think it's the exact same capsule. I do think it's the exact same capsule, but I do think that I just I think maybe it's because it's a plastic body or the way it's secured in here. I think it adds a little bit of just extra 
it almost kind of feels like empty space. Like there's something that it's trying to fill, but it's not quite there, or you don't have enough auditory vocalization to cover that area. That's a big word. <laughs> So I think the I think my problem with it is I'm I'm used to listening to the K688. And so compared to the K688, it has the same capsule. You're getting this almost the same exact EQ. It sounds very similar. But like the SL40, too much bass, and on XLR you got plenty of control, good gain, good volume, just too much bass. And then the SM7B, I don't know if it's just my voice, but I just don't like my voice on this microphone. And even in this comparison, what we just listened to, there's too much, like, I don't know. It's just, it's tinny. It's tinny in, in, in the, the upper top. end. It feels like there is a, for a lack of a better reference, there's a piece of sheet metal up above you and the echo is causing this ever so slight ring to it. Yeah. And, and it's noticeable. And when I start, once it finally hit my ear and I realized that that's what it was, I, that's, I literally, almost completely stopped listening to the other audio parts because it just predominant it, it amplified the more and more and more i heard it i think usb wise i think usb wise the am8 i think sounded great i don't think there was anything wrong with it i actually felt like it was eq'd a little bit more than the k688 out of box i feel like there was just a little bit more presence and a little bit more bass out of box and again all this stuff is subjective you can eq all these microphones and you can eq this am8 and you can probably get that depth piece out as well so so final verdict, what's your thoughts on the AM8? On the AM8, I say that that is probably one of the best options for a USB. 50, for $50, I think it's 50 or 60 bucks. I mean, you're, you're getting an amazing quality microphone. And honestly, the USB variant, I didn't get the dance hall present that I did out of the, the XLR. That's almost kind of what it made me think of. Almost like I was talking in the hardwood floor room, but yet yeah. this is carpet. Uh, like this, this room's not treated, but there's plenty of treatment in here already because the stuff that's here. So it, it's weird that it, this is the only microphone that had that kind of depth. Let me know. What, what did you hear it? Drop down in the comments. Um, but my perspective is for 50 or $60 compared to the K688, if you have the extra 20 bucks or so to spend and you don't care about RGB, I think I still would recommend the K688. I think that it's objectively a better sounding microphone. I think there was a little bit less handling noise just because it is in a like shock mount here. And I felt like there was just less handling noise. When you tapped the RGB or the mute, there was some handling noise. Hopefully you heard that while I was talking about it. So for, for that price range, I do think this is a great microphone. And if I find if you keep putting out microphones that sound like this for this budget price, you're going to make the other manufacturers have to rethink how they price their mics. They're just pricing it for the name and for the reputation. Because I hate to say it, SM7B lives in my setup, but I don't, I don't need it. For these, for these microphones, I think they're, I think this is great. So I think, I think in the end of the day, not to interrupt you, I think at the end of the day, if you've got 50 or 60 bucks, you are not gonna go wrong. USB, plugging this directly in into your setup is a budget option. And then having the opportunity to do an XLR for a better soundscape. It is a better sound for XLR. All, th all four of the mics were better on XLR than on USB, except for the SM7B. It's only XLR, guys. All right, you got any last bits? As, as somebody that does a review microphones, I would lean towards this as somebody that was just looking for a microphone that's gonna go out there. You wanna just game, you want something that's gonna sound good. I, I personally would love to have that one i have always loved five fine mic i went from a blue yeti snowball to a five fine and it literally was like night and day so and it does look really nice hanging upside down with the rgb so just a thought all right this will end this video if you want to go see a comparison of the five fine k688 against a bunch of other microphones check out the video over spartacus's head and if you want to see the dedicated review of the k688 it'll be right here ish so you know go check out that video thank you so much for watching we'll see you over in those videos and uh this is mine now uh, <laughs> okay, bye bye <laughs>